In my last video, I showed you how to use the power of merge shapes in PowerPoint to make beautiful looking forms like this. But today, I'm going to share a faster automated solution using VBA. This macro will save you time, especially when dealing with multiple shapes or larger forms. I'll walk you through writing the code, save it as an Excel add-in, and show you how to set it up for easy access in your Excel ribbon. If you haven't seen the manual process yet, I highly recommend quickly checking out that video first to give some more context to this process. Alright, let's get started. First, let's create a new module. You can name this anything, but we'll leave it as the default for now. Next, you needed to add a reference to the PowerPoint object library. To do this, just go to Tools, References, and find and select the Microsoft PowerPoint object library. Now we'll begin by creating a new subroutine called Create Corners. This routine is gonna handle the entire automation process of creating the corners to make attractive input boxes using PowerPoint and Excel. Before diving into the main logic, it's important to check that the user has actually selected a valid shape. For this, I'll write a helper function. This function will verify whether the current selection is a shape. If the selection is invalid, it will return false. Let's declare it as a private function, which returns a boolean, and use error handling to avoid runtime issues. We'll check if the selection matches a shape by using activesheet.shapes and selection name. If it's not a shape, it won't be able to assign a shape to the shape object, and the function will return false. Now that we have our helper function, let's use it in our main routine. We'll call isSelectionShape at the start to ensure that the user has selected a shape in the workbook. If the function returns false, will display a message and exit the subroutine. This prevents the macro from running unnecessarily if the selection isn't valid. Next, we'll capture the selected shape using the selection.shaperange1. This gives us a reference to the first shape in the selected range, which we'll use throughout the macro. We'll also check if the shape is part of a group, as the process doesn't support grouped shapes. Now we'll declare the variables needed for our macro. These include references to the active worksheet. This is vital if we're going to be building it as an add-in. Then we'll build our PowerPoint objects and shape properties like the background color and the name. Declaring these variables at the start just helps to keep the code organized. To handle the shapes, we'll use PowerPoint's powerful merge shapes feature. Let's create a new PowerPoint application instance and add a blank presentation and then a slide to work with. If we use false when adding the presentation, it will make the presentation invisible, which helps to keep the process seamless for the user. Now we'll grab some properties from Excel, including the background color. This will ensure the corners match the form's polished look. Then we'll store the shape name for later use and copy the selected shape from Excel and paste it into the PowerPoint slide. After pasting, we can adjust its properties like setting the fill color, ensuring it's transparent and hiding the outline. This prepares the shape for merging with a background rectangle and makes sure diagnosing issues with the process is easier. To create the corner effect, we'll add a background rectangle the same size as the shape and send it behind the original one. We'll hide the outline, set its color to the background color we got from Excel and name it appropriately. Then we'll essentially select both shapes and use PowerPoint's merge shapes feature with the subtract option to cut the corners out of the rectangle. Once merged, we can copy the result back to Excel. In Excel, we paste the modified shape and position it exactly where the original shape was and make sure the starting shape is on top of the new corner shape. We should also clean up by closing the PowerPoint presentation and quitting the application. This ensures that no leftover instances are running in the background. To finish off the process, we can add a few optional things to give a more polished and final result. None of these are necessary and can be adjusted or omitted as needed. We can make sure the fill and outline are hidden. We can group the corner shape and the original shape for better shape management. And we can ensure the cells under the shape are merged and formatted to give a consistent feel to our input box. Now we've got all of our code completed, we can create a quick test to check if the process works as expected. In our workbook, we can set a background, make a shape, and then run the code. As you can see, the process happened momentarily and delivered a great looking input box. Now to make it so that you can reuse this easily over and over, let's save this workbook as an Excel add-in. After saving, go to the Developer tab and click on the Excel add-ins. Browse for the file you just saved and make sure it's selected in your add-in list. Then you can close this workbook. If you like, you can opt to save this as a macro-enabled workbook, but it's already saved as an add-in, so that's up to you. Then we can just open a new or existing workbook, right-click anywhere on the ribbon, and select Customize. On the left side, we'll select Macros from the drop-down, and on the right side, we'll select Tool Tabs. Under Drawing Tools, expand the Shape Format list and create a new group. I'm just gonna name this Corners. And then simply drag the macro from the left 
into the corners group and rename it. This is the name you'll see in the ribbon, so make sure it's something that makes sense. Also give it an appropriate icon, press OK, and you're done. Now, whenever you select a shape and go to the Shape Format tab, you'll see your macro there, letting you instantly create that corner shape, which you can now use to quickly build out larger forms. And that's it. We've automated a process that would take much longer to do manually. With this macro, you can quickly add corners to multiple shapes in a fraction of the time. If you have any questions or ideas to improve this process, drop them in the comments below. If you like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing so I can continue to bring you more content like this. And if you missed the manual method, check out my previous video for more context. Thanks very much for sticking around. This is your VB Tutor signing out.